Now we're going to turn to examples where we're looking for discontinuities or for conditions for a function to be continuous or intervals of continuity. Let's start with the following question. We consider the function x cubed plus x squared minus 2 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 4 and we want to find its discontinuities we also want to determine, if we find any discontinuity, whether they are removable or not. Because the function f is a rational function, we know that it is continuous at every point of its domain. In other words, the only discontinuities are the points that are not in the domain, and those would be the zeros of the denominator. In this case, the denominator factors as x minus 1, x plus 4, and therefore we have two discontinuities, which are 1 and negative 4. To see if they are removable or not, we need to look at the limit of f at 1 and at negative 4. Remember that a discontinuity of a function is removable if the limit of the function at that point exists, and non-removable otherwise. At negative 4, if we plug x equal negative 4 at the top, we get negative 4 cubed, that's negative 64, plus 16, negative 48, minus 2, negative 50. So the top is non-zero, and the bottom approaches zero. Therefore, we're going to get an infinite limit. An infinite limit is just a way to say how the limit of f at negative 4 does not exist. Therefore, uh, the discontinuity negative 4 is non-removable. Non On the other end, if we look at what happens at 1, you see that the top, when you plug x equal 1, you get 1 plus 1 minus 2, 0. In other words, x minus 1 is a factor at the top. If we do factor the top and obtain the common factor x minus 1, after cancellation, we obtain x squared plus 2x plus 2 over x plus 4. But this is a rational function which admits 1 in its domain and therefore to find its limit at 1 we only need to plug x equal 1 in it and we obtain 5 over 5, 1. In other words, the limit of f at 1 exists and therefore 1 is a removable discontinuity even though we found that negative 4 is not. Let's turn to a different exercise. The function f here is defined piecewise by 2x plus 1 for x less than negative 1, by x squared for x greater or equal to negative 1 but less than 3. The function takes a value 10 at 3, and is defined by 4x minus 3 for x strictly between 3 and 5, and for x by x squared minus x minus 3 if x is greater or equal to 5. Again, we're looking for discontinuities, and we want to know whether any of them is removable. The first observation is that on an open interval like negative infinity negative 1, the function coincides with 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 is a polynomial and is continuous at every point. So on this open interval at every point, the function um, behaves just like 2x plus 1 and is therefore continuous. Similarly, the function is continuous on negative 1, 3 because on this interval, on this open interval, it coincides with x squared. It also is continuous on the interval 3, 5, because on this open interval the function coincides with the polynomial for x minus 3, and similarly on the open interval 5, infinity, because then it coincides with the polynomial x squared minus x minus 3. So the only possible discontinuities are negative 1, 3, and 5. However, we need to check what happens at each one of these potential discontinuities. If we look at what happens at negative 1, we need to know if the limit of the function at negative 1 exists and if it exists, if it is equal to the value of the function at negative 1. 
remember what we did for limits when a function was defined piecewise and we were looking for the limit of the function at one of the points where the definition of the function changes we looked at the two one-sided limits we're going to proceed here similarly to find the limit at negative one the limit from the left is the limit of 2x plus 1 because when x is less than negative 1 f coincides with 2x plus 1 but the limit at negative 1 of 2x plus 1 is just the value of 2x plus 1 at negative 1 in other words negative 1 and this is because 2x plus 1 is polynomial and therefore continuous on the other end the limit at negative 1 from the right is the limit at negative 1 of x squared because for x greater than negative 1, the function coincides with x squared. So we obtain the limit of x squared, which is 1. That means that the limit from the left and from the right of the function f at negative 1 are not the same, and therefore the limit at negative 1 does not exist. That means that negative 1 is a discontinuity and is non-removable because the limit does not exist. Let's turn to the next potential discontinuity at 3. Again, the function is not defined by the same expression on either side of 3 and therefore we're going to look separately of, uh, at both one-sided limits. At 3 from the left, the limit is the limit of x squared at 3 because f coincides with x squared when x is close to 3 but less than 3. Therefore, the limit at 3 from the left is 9. The limit of f at 3 from the right is the limit of 4x minus 3 at x equals 3, because when x is close to 3 but greater than 3, the function f coincides with 4x minus 3. If we plug x equals 3 in 4x minus 3, we get again, again 9. Therefore, both one-sided limits at 3 coincide, and this common value 9 is the limit of the function at 3. However, the value of the function f at 3 is 10. And that is not the same as the value of the limit. Therefore, the function is discontinuous at 3. So 3 is a discontinuity, but this time it is removable because the limit of f at 3 exists. Finally, the third possible discontinuity is 5, and again, the function is defined by two different expressions on the left and on the right of 5, so we're going to look at the one-sided limits. From the left, the limit of the function is the same as the limit of 4x minus 3, that's polynomial. To get the limit, we plug x equal 5 and obtain 70. From the right, the limit of the function is the limit of x squared minus x minus 3, because f coincides with this polynomial function when x is greater than 5. Because it is polynomial, to obtain the limit, we plug x equal 5 in this quadratic function, and we obtain 5 squared 25 minus 5 20 minus 3 17. Both one-sided limits coincide, therefore, this is the limit of the function. It is 17. And it turns out that at x equal 5, the function is defined by x squared minus x minus 3, and therefore 17 is also the value of the function at 5. That means that f is in fact continuous at 5. Let's turn to a different type of question. We look at a function that is defined piecewise by 3x plus c if x is less than or equal to c, and x squared plus 3x minus 2 if x is greater than c, where c is some constant. In some sense, we are not defining one function here, but a family of functions that, define, that depends on a parameter c. Among all these possible functions, right, each time I change c, I change the function f, among all these possible functions, we want to know which are continuous on the entire real line. First observation is that f is continuous on the open interval negative infinity c and on the open 
open interval C to positive infinity because on those intervals the function coincides with polynomial functions which are continuous. In other words, the only possible discontinuity is at x equals c. Since we want to know for what value of c the function f is continuous on the entire real line, we can rephrase the question as to finding the condition on c to make the function f continuous at x equals c. So let's look at what happens at x equals c. This is the place where the definition of the function changes. We have two different expressions on the left and on the right of x equals c to define f. And therefore again, we're going to look at the one-sided limits. The limit from the left of f at c is the limit at c of 3x plus c, because for x less than c, this is how f is defined. 3x plus c is polynomial, so to obtain this limit, we simply plug x equals c in this expression, and we obtain 4c. Note that for x equals c, the function f is also defined by 3x plus c. In other words, f of c is also 4c. If we look at what happens on the right-hand side when x is approaching c but is greater than c, then the function f coincides with x squared plus 3x minus 2, and therefore the limit from the right is the limit of this quadratic function at c. And to obtain it, we simply plug x equals c in this expression, and we obtain c squared plus 3c minus 2. Therefore, the limit of the function f at c exists if the two one-sided limits coincide, that means is 4c, which is the limit of f from the left, is equal to c squared plus 3c minus 2, which is the limit of f from the right. Since we already know that f of c equals the limit from the left, if we have equality between these two limits, we will also have equality with f of c automatically. So this is the condition that uh, we want to fulfill. In other words, we want to find all the values of c that satisfy this condition. But this is simply a quadratic equation, so this is easy to solve. We put everything on one side. Let's say we subtract 4c on both sides. We get c squared minus c minus 2. And this is easily factored into c plus 1c minus 2. And therefore, c equal negative 1 and c equal 2 are the two possibilities to make this function continuous on the entire real line. Now we are going to turn to one important property of continuous functions, namely the intermediate value theorem, but that will be in the next video.